Okay, welcome back guys to episode three of the Ben and Matt podcast that is still have a running title. <laughs> Today we are joined by a really good friend of ours, business partner of mine, somebody I have shot plenty of projects with, happy to have had him as a man in my life as long as he's been, Troy Robinson. Hello. <laughs> Extraordinary. No, thanks for having me, Matt and Ben. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, of course. Thanks for being willing to yeah. chat. Of yeah. course. Um, yeah, we want to just chat about you and your life and how you've kind of come to and and found filmmaking and shooting photos and and art and um, the influence of your parents because your dad's a musician and entrepreneur and just an overall pretty interesting dude. Um, so yeah, I want to start with, um, yeah, tell me about when you first started shooting, whether that was in elementary school or high school, like shooting photos, were you, like how do you pick up your camera and then be like, this is what I want to do? Right. Um, anyway, so it started actually back when I was a baby. So my dad had a, a Sony flip out cam that recorded to like tapes. Yes. And we, I have plenty of those tapes lying around, but uh, I used to literally pick up the camera all the time. My mom would tell me, and like, when my dad had the camera, I'd just grab it from him. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> I guess it started back there when I found my love for cameras, but yeah. throughout the years, like, you know, my childhood, I'd have, like, one of my best friends, John Paul, from back in the day. Um, I don't see him much anymore, but we used to just go in the backyard and, like destroy things but we'd <laughs> film it for my old youtube channel yeah, just, just, destroy just, things just, kids like, yeah. just, kids just like throwing and smashing them or kind like of pyrotechnics trying to a little, a little of this a little of that yeah. but you know back i have my barn back there but we used to go in there and like screw around with the garden tools and like kind of yeah. hammer yeah. hammer shit around and like yeah. you know throw pitchforks for yeah. fun and we yeah. called it backyard wars but <laughs> eventually we got into like nerf guns and we started putting thumbtacks on the end of them and stuff like that but we filmed a bunch of dumb stuff like that but then i was always looking for different camera routes so i got into really into high speed videography when yeah. i was in probably was middle school guys when that was yeah probably. that that's yeah. when it was like the big thing so i wanted to find like the cheapest high speed camera i could and i found like a like a Fujifilm cool pics or whatever oh. and it was it shot like a thousand frames per second oh, wow, wow. and it but it was like the the frame was like this thin <laughs> but it was still cool to just play around with and I'd film oh it's all good and I, I'd film my friends like snowboarding and stuff nice. but yeah and then my editing journey started when I started playing Call of Duty yeah. so I played Call of Duty for a, like a numerous amount of years but eventually people started getting into like trick shotting and stuff and I had a pretty decent computer at the time. It was like 2008. So for the time, a good computer was not yeah. a good computer. But yeah. back then, I would just Real edit efficient. edit people's gaming clips. And that's I learned a lot because everyone did everything with After Effects. Yeah. So obviously, that's a very in-depth program. And then transferring all my knowledge from there to Premiere was very easy. Yeah, for sure. So, and I just like learned over the years. 2009, 2010? Yeah. Somewhere? Around editing, like that's when I started editing. So what, 13, 14? Yeah. yeah and then obviously you did skateboarding, I did yeah. skateboarding as well with my buddy yeah. Justin from high school. Sweet. And uh, that was fun. I mean, I had my T3 with yeah. the fisheye and, you know, the, yeah. the scorpion handle and it was a good time. Yeah. Just go out at like, at night and skate, <laughs> skate street spots and film that. I was never the skater though, I just filmed. Yeah, it's so interesting, man. Like the humble beginnings, like I was telling Troy, literally the same. Like I got a T2I, same fisheye, started mm -hmm. filming, like had a little handle. And we were talking about that in the video that we did um, of like looking back on old, old footage. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just funny, like I made a wooden handle in construction class and used that forever. <laughs> wow. And then it broke on, on a shoot. And then like, I was just like, what do I do? And it was just like, so funny. So it's like pretty cool to see how far it's come and a lot of guys I follow now like this couple of people from Toronto specifically um, this guy Samurai Films he always posts all of his like real old throwbacks of mm -hmm. how he used to like make a crane jib out of wood and like real real like throwback stuff um, yeah I'd love to interview him at some point and then my friend Marcus Letts who I'm, we're going to interview um, hopefully soon here um, 
was the same. He started skateboarding and then um, now he's like full-time director for music videos. I'll let him to explain his own story when he comes on. But um, yeah, it's just cool to see how far it can go. Yeah. And like, again, it's just a matter of building on building blocks, you know? For sure. Yeah. Anything other than film or did you latch on to like film and photography and stick with that or did it ever sprawl throughout any of the other arts with like editing did you get more into music like anything in that realm or um i guess like recently in the last two years only like throughout high school and stuff i just edited like video stuff and it was it was great like took on gigs and stuff with my friends but um i guess t a couple of years ago i started this music channel on youtube mm -hmm. where i don't make the music but i just add slow and reverb like it's a very yeah, yeah, common yeah, yeah. Yeah, common yeah. trend right now but yeah, yeah. I, I do that sure and that. yeah i do it with uh synth wave so like 80s songs okay, but like yeah, they're yeah. kind of pop style but people like it and it was a very niche thing because nobody was slowing these artists songs cool. and I, d I just did it and it kind of blew up like i don't know i have i'm all i'm just about to hit a million oh. views on the channel so well, not crazy. subscribers but awesome. views so like crazy. It's going well and I just do it once, but that's the other side of like my creative thing where yeah, I like, yeah. I like hearing music, but I don't think I could ever make it. It's just yeah. like a thing where I, I've tried yeah. to learn the programs and stuff, but I don't think I have the knack for that. All of my brain power goes towards video yeah. <laughs> editing and <laughs> filming and stuff. So yeah. That's how it goes, right? Like, yeah, for sure. For sure. How, how much, editing. how much of your parents influence like specifically your dad on your music taste and what you find musically? Like, for me, that's that's where it all came from, right? It's like listening to my parents. I was thankful enough to like my parents listened to a ton of records and like, you know, Fleetwood Mac, Super Tramp, like mm -hmm. U2, The Doors, you know, Pink Floyd and everything else. And um, yeah, like f just explaining a little bit about what your dad does and like knowing where that came from and just being surrounded by like, guitars and, and yeah. stuff like that all, all the, the time so. all, all the time um i never got into the guitars like just recently i started working for his company as like the social media guy doing that stuff so i i know a little bit now but i i mean he did put me in guitar lessons like a long time ago but yeah. i never followed through with it i don't know i just never picked up that that uh feeling for guitars that he did yeah and it's like hard as a kid right it's like you you like want kids have such a s small attention span right and it's like when they're into something they're into it and it's yeah. just like that's how i feel about music myself too it's like when i was younger having a drum set like i would just sit in front of it and not really know what i'm doing and i would yeah. just like get so bored because i couldn't think of just things on the top mm -hmm. but now like the more i listen to music in the current state i want to pick up drumming again because i think it'll be another cool hobby that i can pick up but i don't know it's just like it's hard to kind of get children to just like Sit. 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 Do, do like anything. An hour. <laughs> it's fascinating because I don't know. Like I've worked with kids a lot, and it's like they have to have that, you know, interest in it, or you have to create some kind of interest for them to latch yeah. on to. It's like but an like, yeah. yeah. And then same with you guys with film. It's like okay, it's like you know what? For me as a kid, it's like oh, I could play with toys or whatever. But they're like oh, you know, do your homework, do math. I'm like no, they came to art class. They're like okay, paint us a picture. I'm like all right, here we go. Everybody, everybody, quiet, and I'll. I was able to be sit there and do that for hours. Nice. And then same with once it came to film with like, watch this video on safety. The moment it was on a screen, I was good. Yeah. I was like, yes, I'll listen to every single for thing sure. and I'm, I'm here for it. But they're like, okay, if there's like a booklet, a no. safety booklet, <laughs> or I'm like, I don't care, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. But like, I think it's the power of like, knowing the proper medium. For yeah, that's super interesting. I'm the same way. I just I visually learn through film and videos, mm -hmm. which is why I'm on YouTube like ninety percent of the time. Yeah. And I learn so much just by watching other people do things. Yeah. That's a lot of the way how I learned like editing is just watching people do it. Watching so when you say watching people edit, how is it watching other people's like finished products of edits and being able to dissect and be like, okay, they like had this shot, went to this one, came back to it, mm -hmm. or is it actually watching YouTube video of some guy being like, okay, this is how to do like an L cut or a right, right. And mm. like what, what is that? Because a lot of yeah, people hear they're like, yeah, a lot like, of yeah. people hear they're like, oh, I just watched it. And they're like, what is that? I get that. I see how it's like, it's, it's complicated in that way. But I guess when I watch a finished edit, I do like go into in depth with it. Like, what did he do here kind of thing? But like also that stuff is 
to me is looking for polished things and how, how like for transitions and stuff mm -hmm. it's watching a finished edit just gives me ideas of what to do in my next video yeah, yeah, yeah. watching I do also watch people like technically edit so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go to tutorials and stuff if okay. I want to learn something but that most of the time when I'm watching someone actually edit it's to save time in my own process not okay. so much figure out what I want to do creatively mm -hmm. yeah, that's so where it my skills. Yeah, yeah you get motor skills from like learning just shortcuts through yeah, pe yeah. watching people edit the most I learn is just like oh I didn't know that was like a feature or like yeah. something it's it just it gets you picked up on small things that'll really make the difference yeah. for time savers and then yeah creative stuff comes from final watching final edits and okay. stuff so cool. yeah I never makes, thought about it that way that's yeah. fast. but it makes sense right like and I think it's still something I've been trying to like break as far as like storytelling in my own editing journey is like skateboarding is such a specific style of editing and we've talked about this before is like you know like you'll edit to a song and then you'll throw like the really hard tricks at the end and have like you know stuff in between and some fillers in between but there's no real story it's like you're kind mm -hmm. of creating that it's just a montage yeah it's just a montage right and it's just like basic montage um but it's so fascinating trying to like edit like client stuff and and other just like throwaway footage because it's like you have you have to shoot to edit almost you yes. have to like create the story yeah before you even started shooting you have to kind of know what direction you want to go and it's it's super strange so i i'd done that um like a personal montage edit video of like oh just my friends over the years i've been recording for years i'm like yeah. all right let's just throw something up and then afterwards i was like wow like I'm glad I have it. Like I'm happy to see like all those positive memories. But so far as the edit itself, I remember sitting there days and days, like going through all the hours of footage and being yeah. like, okay, what am I doing with this? And like trying to force it into something that makes sense. But more than that, I was like, most of these shots are just like random memories and snippets that don't flow together nicely. There's not like a cohesive yeah. stream that makes sense opposed to shooting like narrative stuff where you're like okay i know i'm gonna like go below the table transition and then yeah. we're gonna come out from the rooftop and then it's gonna be a next yeah. shot right and it's something where i'm like okay even though i'm trying to shoot like more stuff just for fun and it's like do i do i have it in mind to make the edit all the time yeah like going about this or is that going to take away from me trying to capture like a genuine moment and that's yeah, the, because man. I'm not used to editing as much as you guys by any means, especially you. Like it's it's when you do shoot for fun, let's say. Yeah. What is that? When I shoot, yeah, it's there. I it's like a good question. You turn over a product super fast. Like. I think so. When when you're just kind of filming something to film it in my like when I do that. Yeah. I don't know. I just like I'm able to piece things together in editing and make a story out of it. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the, the gift of a good editor though, is like just getting a, a bulk of footage and not necessarily having any input on how it was yeah. shot or, um, and if they can, and that's why like, again, I've worked with you for as long as I have, cause you've blown me away every time. <laughs> every time I send you footage and you just produce something, I'm like, my brain would have never went there. Yeah. Like it would have never went there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's the power of a good editor. And it's just like, I don't know, what do you have to say for kids who are starting up and learning editing and are getting stuck in the process and getting defeated and, and feeling like they're really stuck in a project and they can't get the project and, out? And not even just kids, anybody who's like trying to pursue a new section, like yeah. we all come to film in different times or come to editing at different right. moments to be like, all right, I'm going to try and pick this up. Like, for I'm, sure. Yeah. yeah. I get that. So my suggestion i i actually dealt with this a lot when i was younger and like i still do when i'm stuck on a project and i'm just like because uh, there's there's a lot of those moments especially if it's something you necessarily don't want to do yeah, yeah. um i would recommend taking a break from that edit and film something else and try to edit that okay to kind of bring yourself out of the creative block essentially yeah. so you can kind of bring yourself your mind out of like the focus of that edit because you don't want to be stuck on if you just keep focusing on that edit you're not going to get anywhere yeah. you have to open your mind creatively to another project to allow you to then see further into the other project essentially so don't focus on one thing 
yeah. like branch out and focus on other things. Do you have a do you have a personal limit that you found or have imposed about number of projects you take on or sizes of projects? Because mm. I know just personally, I've question. thrown a bunch of things. I'm like, yeah. Troy, edit this. Troy, edit <laughs> this. And then I know that you're putting out other content. So I'm like, I wonder how many like project files you have going. I watch. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, I don't actually know my limit <laughs> to be completely honest with you, because every single day I. I have I have editing every day. Yeah, yeah. It, it, um, with my with my dad's company, I literally have at least like seven videos a day I'm editing. They're very short, yeah. but like I have to make three videos for every sec. Like they want to essentially do a reel, yeah. like a story, and one widescreen demo for their YouTube. Sure. So I have to make three videos for each guitar they want to showcase, okay. and they send me maybe four guitars a day yeah. to edit. But I have, they've recently been giving me all the projects at one, like at once on Friday so I can like organize myself throughout the week. Okay. But um, a limit on projects, it's kind of tough because I also don't want to miss out on like sure. clients, right? Sure, like I want to yeah. bring as many things as I can in, obviously to expand my knowledge and also just gain our client base a little bit but yeah. i will delegate things to matt if it like, becomes too much yeah absolutely and i'm always happy to take on work and um it's funny though because i there's another there's a writer i follow on tiktok who's a full-time writer um i don't know exactly what space he exists in as far as writing mm -hmm. but he talks about his daily limit like okay. so he has a writing cap he needs to do per day yeah and yeah. he talks about like the overall like it's fucking like 130,000 words he okay. needs to reach. Yeah, so yeah. he's like, okay, four or 5,000 words I'm doing a day, 6,000 words. And he talks about like kind of the peaks and valleys. Like some days he'll do seven, some days he'll do three. And I'm just paraphrasing, but like he'll document his day throughout his work day. And like, it's kind of, it's really flowy. And that's what has been like the hardest thing for me is like transitioning from, you know, a traditional workplace to, you know, full-time, um, working for yourself mm -hmm. like it doesn't feel like work but then you're like okay i'm going to spend four hours of really productive work and you're going to get a bunch of shit done and then maybe you don't have to do anything n tomorrow and then yeah, like yeah. the next day you do the kind of the same thing and it's just like it almost makes me feel guilty because you're not doing ev something every day mm -hmm. but at the same time uh, you're not necessarily needing to like it's yeah I it's, don't know. it's strange with art like that because again sometimes you reach fatigue or whatnot but at least for you, Troy, do you have like, because again, you have a certain amount of stuff you have to get done. Do you have an amount of time that you put into something? If you're like, every day I want to do this for at least two hours, maybe I'll do more, maybe I'll do an hour and a half. But is there like a goal each day to, to try to accomplish? Honestly, <laughs> I just edit until I feel satisfied, yeah. to be honest with you. Like, even some days I'll like edit all day from like, I don't know, 10 in the morning till evening. And I'm like, I don't know if I did enough, but yeah. I know like that's just my workaholic brain coming out because I work, I edit on weekends too yeah. sometimes, and I, uh, I like, I'd like to condense my schedule into a time where I can at least have some time left over mm -hmm. in my day to chill. Mm -hmm. But lately, it's been packed. But we got through a bunch of projects. Like in from September to now, there's been so many projects that we've just had to go hard on, and. Um, I just edited as much as I could really like to my full capacity and now that it's kind of slowed down I'm like oh I have more time on my I hands more, and yeah. I can do more which is why I'm filming content with Matt and like we can sit here and do a podcast yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where before I was I was actually stressing like I was getting stressed out which was not good yeah. um, and yeah, now I'm kind of in a balance so yeah and that's what we've kind yeah. of learned together is is with How the business is like there comes a point where you have a like bulk project amount and that's when you need to outsource like and that's kind of like where i think we complement each other as far as like business and, and perspective is like i i just think about like okay how can we get the highest turnover and like what's our what's our turnover speed versus if we need to subcontract this out and then that's when you like you just have a you have more longevity you know, like if you're mm -hmm. if you're killing yourself trying to get projects done and, and like staying up and like just straight up in front of the screen all the time, like yeah. it's not necessarily beneficial to the long the longevity. Because if you want to do this longevity wise, like you need to be smart about how you actually do it. Because 
it's just like anything else. You wouldn't spend, you know, 17, 18 hours in the office Monday through Friday. Like there's, Mm -hmm. there's days where you have to delegate and push that work off. And I think that's like the biggest struggle for like creatives because not only are you attached to that product because you're the person actually doing the editing or the photo or the video, it's like, are they going to do a good job? Are they going to see it the way I see it? And then on top of that too, it's like a lot of um, artwork that's been, I don't know, monetized or with this profit behind it, you have deadlines to meet too. So it's like, okay, I have this much work to get done and you're making your own time. So it's like, all right, I just have to push through for these next three days because the client needs it back. Or same with film shoots. Like I only have these actors for that amount of time. We need to get these shots. Or I have this location for that amount of time. So it's it's a bizarre thing when I hear about like, you know, struggling or starving artists with it. Sometimes it's not a matter of like, oh, how much money do we have? But it's more of like how much artists, you often artists will push themselves to their limit. Um, even though it's in service of doing what they love and what they're passionate yeah. about, but it's like, when do you know when to draw that line? Because it is something that you're so close to. Yeah, and it's definitely know. like, it's a, a real thing, right? It's like, you know, people like, you're doing the, the dream, right? You're doing the thing, mm-hmm. but it's also like, it's it's hard, right? It's like, it's hard work and it's like, it's, there's, again, peaks and valleys like we talked about in the last episode. It's yeah. like, but, I just ask myself the question, where would I rather stress? Like, would I want... That's great. Yeah, would I want the stress of high volume at, you know, the bar? Or would I want stress of having my own deadline capacity? You know, like, Mm -hmm. that's the question I've been asking myself this year is, like, what stress am I more willing to put up with? I I had a similar conversation with someone at, at a previous job I worked, and they were talking about... Um, taking time off to do something. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, my family takes a camping trip every year, but I don't know if I can get the time off work. And I'm like, okay. I just had like a a family dinner that I didn't have. It was like every every other year or something. They're like, oh, how have things been? And I said, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm still working. I'm like, but we just filmed this thing. And then I started talking about film and I got passionate about that. And it made me think about, I'm like, wow. And I almost didn't take that day off. Like I almost didn't yeah. make the yeah. time for that really yeah. important thing. Same with the screening, that man. Comes I was up, like, like, literally, I was really like thinking about, do I need to go? And I was like, holy fuck, I'm so glad I went. Because yeah. Yeah. like, yeah. and the thing people need to remember though, and just in general, like is when you take time off to actually do something you enjoy, whatever that looks like, mm-hmm. you're gonna come back more refreshed. Like every, I've, I've been super lucky with the amount of time I've been, take, I've been able to take off this year. And every time I come back, everyone at my work is like, you're so refreshed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's because I'm choosing to do things on my time off that like relights my fire. And that's yeah. why I've been able to, to work as much as I have and, and do all the things I have is because I'm taking smaller breaks. Mm-hmm. And relighting that fire every time. Yeah. Don't let yourself get burnt out. No, exactly. Especially Before on some. You realize you need to take a break. Like take a break and then be like, just just be smart about it. Yeah. You know? And especially don't get burnt out, like you said, about on something that you don't feel is the priority in your life. Yeah. Um, which I think is really interesting. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, for you, Troy, though, how is thing how things with your like relationship with like film changed? over the years like again it's it's a pretty long one yeah. for you maybe not from when you were an infant no, but from yeah, once you started that. to get into it to like where you are today how has it sort of evolved um yeah in the beginning like i guess where my are, are you talking about like film in general like, film in general for you or like some people switch positions from like again like you have like some business things now opposed to when you were just shooting in your backyard with yeah, your buddy okay. like what what was that change or incentive to change how you went about things? I see what you mean. So I guess my big change was when I got my corporate job filming full time, like in a literally an office space, yeah. like building. And I was it was more serious, like it felt more serious. And I actually had a purpose to what I was filming. Yes. That's when it really changed. And honestly, like after the three and a half plus years I was there, it like it down like my uh my mental towards filming kind of degraded a little bit because i was filming the same thing every single day editing the same stuff and i was like this is not fun (laughs) (laughs) i just like at a point i was like damn i gotta change so 
I quit obviously and I started the marketing company and that basically relit the fire entirely yeah. so I did have my moments where I came downhill a lot mm -hmm. and I was like not feeling it and I didn't even know if I wanted to pursue it anymore but um, I, my mental just snapped when things started getting bad because I knew I wanted to do this but I didn't want to lose that fire so I just kept I pushed myself to just leave that toxic space and like move into full-time doing thing that I am full-time filming and editing but I'm full-time filming and editing different things yeah so it's a lot different but as far as like film goes too terms, right? it yeah. is on my terms which is great like you how you can do it whenever you need want or feel like it I feel like it all the time now but um what I really miss is actually just filming short films and stuff. Yeah, that was that's my favorite thing to do, mm -hmm. and I'm glad we're doing, doing it. it more this year. I, yeah. mean, I totally agree. That's like, so good. That's the like best yeah. feeling. And like, I can relate to you with that feeling too. Like when I got hired to do the tour gig, like that's on paper the coolest fucking thing I've done. Yeah, that's crazy. But also, Which we haven't talked about too much. Like the tour gig. Yeah. What is that specifically that you're referring to? So in April 2019, I was hired. Um, by a musician and we I was a part of a tour a bigger tour called hit after hit tour so there was four musicians um, George Canyon Doc Walker Charlie Major and Manny Blue so I was hired specifically by Manny Blue to do his socials and document the tour and it was a 40 day tour we did 37 shows in 40 days across mm -hmm. Canada mm -hmm. um, and I was in a new city in a new hotel room every day yeah so Again, on paper, coolest experience, and it was like it was such a beautiful experience. Um, but I got super burnt out. Yeah, and I really like was just pushing it personally, and and just like was not the best version of myself on that tour. And it's hard to be when you have, you know, everything's paid for, and you're in a bar, and you're I'm twenty, and I'm partying every day. It was just not a good space because it's socially acceptable in the music industry almost mm -hmm. right and um it's a conversation i want to have with a musician um about what that what that is like mm -hmm. but um yeah i was i i got to a point where i was super burnt out and i was in a really bad place mentally after because i was doing the same thing every day mm -hmm. like it was the same set yeah it was the same songs yeah everything was the same the crowd banter was the same it was just a new venue so yeah. it's just like again and i'm i I'm so thankful I had that opportunity, but I do understand the feeling of like, oh shit, this is this is what I'm doing, and it's like you almost feel guilty. It's it's fascinating with yeah. that because you're like, I'm finally doing the thing that people said, oh, you want to get to this point, you want to get there, and then finally yeah. being presented with it and having that opportunity or the experience of being like, this is not what I thought it was going to be, or not it's all it's chopped up to be, yeah. like. Um, in other people's eyes. Yeah, I started to feel a job, right? And that's that's where I go back to the saying all the time is like, I feel like I'm pretty intuitive with like what I want projects in, in this work to feel like. Mm -hmm. And when I feel it, I know. There's a fucking switch, man. And it's like the same, the feelings I get out shooting a short film. It's like, there's nothing describable like it. Yeah. Or you're doing oh yeah, on paper, paper, yeah. Right? When it feels like, um, on paper you have a job that is chopped up to be everything amazing with all that you should want as an artist or as a creative to be able to you know be creating every day mm -hmm. but if it's not in service of you know um if it doesn't have I suppose the diversity um that you crave and yeah. makes it feel really personal even if it's a cool project like you said it's like it's great to be able to shoot a concert like every day that's so fascinating and so like engaging but when it becomes kind of monotonous i think a lot of artists get a little fatigued in that sense it's easier to get fatigued after that um but for you troy what's your like favorite again you said like shooting short films but do you have like a way to work that you prefer whether or not it's editing like do you have like oh i want to be surrounded by loudness or i need right. like a quiet booth they're same with shooting is there any like style um that you're like oh i don't want anybody to talk to me I want to have us like where's that kind of I guess sometimes when I'm filming, I get a little hangry, but like, yeah. no, no, um, I don't, I don't know when I'm like really concentrated or frustrated on getting a shot. Yeah. I can become a little like timid, but, uh, my favorites, like I, my favorite style of shooting is, uh, that's a tough one. Cause I used to love automotive oh, until yeah. I've worked my job and then I no longer like automotive. Um, 
I don't know. Um, adventure, like travel stuff is oh, probably yeah. the most fun. It's the most freeing because you can kind of just pick up your camera and shoot anything. Mm -hmm. And then later in post editing that is like the best because you just see all the colors of nature yeah. and stuff and it comes yeah. through and you're like, oh, the color grading looks so good or like yeah. the flow of the edits like fantastic. And you can kind of look back and see your entire trip in a in a short film yeah. kind of. So yeah. I, that's my favorite style and it's kind of the most freeing because mm -hmm. you're traveling at the same time. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I feel the same way too and I also have just like always appreciated um, looking back on stuff and like I was saying to a coworker or I was saying it to you maybe of like how I just wanted to like start doing this because like I eventually just want to like be able to be like hey this is like this trip right this trip I'm going to go on I like oh, that was your dad in his 20s and when he was in Southeast Asia. And, like, I just want this, like, cool stuff for me to have forever and to look back on and just, like, be timeless about and just, like, kind of fast forward back to when I was there. And, like, especially all the stuff we did in college, like, all those vlogs, like, that's such a cool thing to look back on to and still. And, like, even the short films, like, and that's why I'd, like, try to be a little cameo in the back. <laughs> like, for the... For the love of just watching it and being like, oh, that was a really cool time in my life. I think that's that's super important, like with all art that you make, if it gets to be um, like immortalized, whether or not you have, you know, yeah. the files saved or if you have old sketchbooks or if you have, you know, your shelves where you've made something and you get to put it up yeah. there. Um, even if like you look back and you're like, wow, I can do so much better today. Yeah. But it, it, it's nice to encapsulate that moment or that time that you're like yeah that was that was good or man yeah, that was, that was rough that was like yeah, yeah i like i remember shooting one one of the shorts and it was outside in the winter and the cold at night and i'm like that was brutal yeah, filming yeah. it but i'm like wow that shot still looks really cool and yeah, i'm like i remember it's a it's yeah. an interesting watch there's a lot of things that like that was a tough edit to that know, was come hard, though. that was the, the other hard thing about school is like you had one you know, one initial screening mm -hmm. when you'd watch a final film. Obviously, the groups would watch it so many other times. But, yeah. like, for us to see um, some of the films, like, some of them were really interesting. Um, I just wish I had, like, access to a database where we had everything all the time. So I could just, like, watch them on free will. But, like... I have the the final film recording like of nice. the, the screening that oh. we did at the end of college. I have that file. Because oh, cool. I, yeah. I, I sent it to... To Candace, I don't know why I had that file, but I did. <laughs> yeah, so I have I have the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on my, it's on my heart. It's one thing they did teach you in college is just like be organized with your files, yeah. which was like a huge deal for me. Like, yeah. I never used to be organized, no, but man. I've like condensed my organization and my folders to like just down you, to the T. You'd have to be too you with how to. many things yeah. that you have going on. I think that's a big one. Like. Bef like a few years ago when I was writing, I'd kind of have like scribbles and a bunch of different things. And then when I got more serious about it, it was like, okay, what does it look like to become more serious about something? Um, and it was organization. That was the first thing for me was I'm like, if I want to write, I need to keep it contained in some way. Yeah, and it's interesting. Like even <laughs> I've kept a journal since I was fucking 14. Mm -hmm. Like grade 10 would be 14 in grade 10 roughly yeah um 15 2013 whatever sure. it is uh i kept a journal and there's a couple of years that i didn't write the year mm. it's like, it just the dates and i'm like i don't know when this was yeah i don't know when this was. <laughs> i don't know so it's like it's so I, and that's something i want to do for the rest of my life is journal um but i don't know it's pretty crazy to read journal entries from a grade 10 like yeah. in my current state and it's yeah. just like it's such a trip man and it's like I'm so glad I did it and I'm so glad I'm continuing to do it I think I took a probably six months off the entire time like there's mm -hmm. been journals and yes they're not every day they're, there's like months where there's nothing and then there's months where there's tons um, because I was only ever writing when I was really sad that was yeah, like yeah. my outlet now I'm writing all the time like mm -hmm. I'm writing when stuff's good I'm writing when stuff's bad I'm trying to figure out new ideas and I'm thinking about things and I'm journaling about it and it's just like I don't know it's something that I've I've been really proud of myself for keeping for so long mm -hmm. it's, it's 
it feels pretty unique, you know, like, I, I don't know, besides, like, Matthew McConaughey is the one person that, like, everybody thinks about yeah. who's journaled fucking literally every day for 20 yeah. years. I watched, um, it was the director, uh, oh, God, I can't remember his name now. He was a composer, actually. He's won, like, Oscars for composing. He just directed the Marvel, the Marvel special presentation, A Werewolf by Night, and him and his brother had recorded pretty much their entire life. The brother has either God, so like voice recordings mm -hmm. of like every single family yeah. dinner since they were kids wow. or just like video recordings on like old Super 8 or whatnot of their pretty much their entire childhood, Dude, not cute. just birthdays and whatnot, but he's like, he's like in their basement. It's like the part of the documentary about them yeah. was they went back to their mom's basement and there's just tapes on tapes on tapes. He's like, this one's like, okay, 1987, June 14th, yeah. 1987, June 15th. And I'm like, you have a full tape of each day. He's like, yeah, we just roll through the whole thing. And I'm like, what is that like? And it was the craziest thing to try and think. I'm like, what was the editing process like to try to decide, because they used some of the old clips yeah, from their day. And I'm like, well, what would you <laughs> sift through for yeah. what, like 40 years? I'm like, <laughs> I go, what do you do with that footage? Wow. But yeah, that's true, man. Like, makes those calls, right? Like, who's the person who's- Exactly, the that's yeah. a tough one. And like, what, it's always, they say to like, oh, the final script is in the edit, the final, um, everything is with the edit. There's a lot of power to be there, whether or not it's yeah. color grading or, or story or doing it non-linear or whatnot. So how does it feel like getting stuff that you didn't shoot personally and like turning that into your like your spin or whatnot? That's my biggest roadblock. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you when I don't shoot somebody, or sorry, shoot somebody, <laughs> shoot something and uh, somebody just gives me a bunch of footage and is like, make something yeah I'm, i just get stuck for a couple of days i'm gonna be honest because yeah, it's, true, it's, true. it's tough it, happens to me all it time. is very tough i get stuck with my own footage all the time mm -hmm. it's just like you know and i've also realized too like i've been shout out to matt Rubito. like i was blessed with editing and going through his uh brother's footage and mm -hmm. telling his brother's story mm -hmm. of him passing away and um just being granted permission to do that is such a crazy thing to me mm -hmm. like it's again editing is such a powerful tool because it's like you are deciding how somebody's story is told yeah you know yeah and it's just like i remember we talked to i talked to brian kalkofuko about that a lot is yeah. um about me telling his story and he told me a story where somebody kind of did the same thing did an interview on him and and shed him in such a negative light mm -hmm. and thinking back to um remember in second year we went to that adventure screening yep 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 the and like piece of the band film festival yes. that we got a segment yeah, of yeah. yes yes and the film about the girl who was a climber with a stump arm yeah 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 i remember that, that. story that mm -hmm. story where she's talking that she's literally riffing on her own documentary in her new documentary. <laughs> yeah. Like talking about how um, they were just like giving her shit for, for being like, you know, getting her to climb like really mediocre. Walls. Yeah. Just like a general hill that they're like, Oh, they can do it even yeah. with this disability. And yeah, she's like, fucking bullshit, and like, she's like, I remember she had a term too. She's like, so far as like a hike, she's like, this is a beginner, like, stage two hike of, yeah. like, a 17, like, difficulty thing or whatnot. Yeah. And, yeah, it's really interesting. See, I want to find that documentary. Yeah, that was good. I think, I, I think it's literally stumped. <laughs> it <laughs> it is. It was, just, it was so good, too. I remember, yeah. like, seeing her on that, like, but sheer loved, cliff face and she's jumping through and I'm yeah. like, this is insane. Yeah, I, I just loved, like, the, the transparency <laughs> and how refreshing that was. Like, mm -hmm. because it's... It's so powerful, right? Like how you tell somebody's story. Yeah. It's just like, who are you to fucking dictate <laughs> the way that person's perceived? Yeah. Like that's such. I, and I, and I've tried to be as as um, collaborative as I physically can with the people that actually give me permission to do that mm -hmm. for them, because it's important. Yeah. Um, I I had a conversation recently. Like we've been casting for the next film, and it's um, about. Um, representation yeah. too, like across the board you know, of, I'm sad I'm of what on this one because I think this is going to be a really interesting piece. I hope so. I hope so. And it's 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 fascinating, especially like 
today we're getting so much more representation, whether or not it's like people of color, whether or not it's queer stories, or it's like finally getting more women directors to tell like more stories here. And it's like, what does that look like and how does the quality change and feel when it's somebody getting to tell their own story yeah. instead of like an interpretation of something, which again, we're artists and we have to make these sort of, you know, judgments and considerations, but um, for like taking in footage, I suppose, when, if you guys edit like each other's work, if that ever happens, is it like, um, how much do you want them there with you to edit? Be like, okay, this was my vision going into it to try to assist with that kind of thing. Right. Um, just wondering like what the notes are like when someone gives you, even if it's a corporate thing, to be like, okay, here's this footage. I like, you know, we want it to be super, super modern and trippy and yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, how does Honestly, that feel to like take that. notes to be that, like, though, right? how do you explain, or what's a good, like, what's a good explanation for you when a client comes to you with something or like, how Sometimes people come to me and they're just like, we don't know what we want, but we want this shot and like, we'd love to have it for our Instagram. And I'm like, okay. And then other people are like very specific in what they want. And I appreciate that when somebody's like, I know exactly what I want, it makes my life easy. But also when somebody gives me a small description of what they want, it yeah. makes my life more fun because I get to be creative. Yeah. And I will never ever again give someone a draft that's not color graded, just yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> if, it's, yeah. if it's log footage, I'm throwing a LUT on it and at least giving them the LUT. Because people sometimes like when you see the first draft, they're like, this is shit. <laughs> like, this is bad. And I'm yeah, like, so, so funny though, like, right? Like, yeah, I remember so horrible. I remember shooting a photo set and I showed somebody the back of my camera and I always shoot under. So I'm bringing stuff in post. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And he looked at it and Lo was like, yeah, it's great. And I knew he was <laughs> fucking full of shit. So, so but, but we, like, we didn't have a relationship <laughs> yet at that point where I, yeah. where I was you know enough to call him out on that but like and then i showed him the same photo finish and he's mm -hmm. like oh my god i was like you didn't have faith in me in that yeah. moment, and i saw it and he's like you're right but it was such a funny moment because yeah it's like for sure and i think that's something with um those of us who aren't as technical like for you saying it's like okay footage doesn't come in looking the way it does at the end it comes yeah. in kind of bland yeah. or sometimes gray people will say yeah. and then having a lot is like at least the starting the of yeah. like the color to make it pop or whatnot and the same with you for yeah. shooting under what is that what does that actually mean because again just shooting a, a stop underexposed at, at most right? yeah like, um so it's so that i can save yeah. i can save the shadows okay because you can pull more from the shadows than you can the highlights. Yeah. If you blow the highlights, they're gone. Mm -hmm. If you underexpose the shadows, you can pull them a little bit. Yeah. Um, obviously, the goal is always to shoot as as perfect as you can, but there's situations always. Like but. weddings are the biggest example when you need to capture a moment and you're just not ready. You yeah. just have to work with what you got. So. Yeah. 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 But it's funny. Like there's that's like almost, and I I wonder if on film sets they have. They must, like on a director's monitor, have a built-in LUT and, okay, this is exactly the way the, yeah. the way a picture's going to come out on screen mm -hmm. when we're done. In the air, either they're, they're going to look like completely flat. Yeah, because that's why there's so much time, like when you're lucky enough to have a full film set going and like the time to do prep where you're able to do test shooting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you can go back, yeah, and you'll be like, okay, what's the color grade look like on this? Like, how do we, so that when you get to set, you can have that LUT or whatnot yeah. color grade on your, your film as you shoot it. Because yeah. I can't imagine for so many, so many shoots where you're like, okay, how is this going to look after? Or having to have the foresight to be like, okay, I know this is how it's going to go. But that's such a fascinating thing with art where it's like, whether or not you're sculpting or painting, you're like, I have a vision of what this is going to be yeah. and it's not going to look nice at the beginning yeah, no, by so trust, many things. You trust the artist. Man. Yeah. Like you have to let them like, and it, it comes down to like a, a control thing, right? It's like you, and sometimes I, I get stressed out as well. Like when I send somebody something and they send me back like a super rough final, I'm like, what the fuck? And then yeah. I'm like, no, just like let them finish. Yeah. Let them finish. Yeah. And again, like, you know, people, and that's the, the thing I've been trying to be more mindful of this year is like asking people, is this finished? Is this completely done mm -hmm. in my hands, in your opinion? Mm -hmm. Like whether that's like 
somebody at work getting me to try a dish yeah. or somebody getting me to try a cocktail mm-hmm. or like seeing an edit, like just trying to be more mindful of that because you don't know how many hours that person's put into that yeah. and you don't know how far along the journey they are in that edit mm-hmm. or that dish or that cocktail. Like they could be showing you something at 50%. Yeah. And if you say this is shit, they'll never get to a hundred. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you could totally blow up their dreams in that moment. So yeah. it's yeah. like kind of, it's a really fine line. Of I, like, I think there's a, there's a phrase I have just coming out is, um, context informs perspective mm-hmm. so much because yes. if you yes. go in blank to be like oh well that movie doesn't look good that's like oh well it's because the edit's not done we're still missing scenes like it's yeah. going to be there or same with like a script where you're like well it's not that good it's like that was the first draft it's not yeah as, as it should be yet up to the standards of whoever's created it again why the, the 48 or 24 hour film challenges are so fascinating because mm-hmm. If you so if you show somebody and don't explain that you did this in twenty four hours or forty eight hours, they're like, "This kind of sucks." <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, no, like we made this in twenty four hours. Yeah, and you know? then you like or again like the one shot when we did the clap. Like, yeah. You had oh to do yeah, yeah. One shot. Mm-hmm. Like, that was fucking nuts. Yeah. yeah. That was hard. But yeah. then if, again, if people don't understand what's going into it. Yeah. Um, so when people are like, well, you know, it shouldn't have to matter. It should just, good art should just be good. And you get all these. Again, we can go down the rabbit hole of each side. So like, yeah, like, yeah. we can just pick a direction and just go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't know. Again, it's, it's subjective. It's making stuff because you want to make stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like my, this guy I follow on YouTube forever. He's out of um, BC. He's, is saying his life's better when you make stuff and he makes YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Um, super good adventure filmmaker. Mm-hmm. Um, does like a sailing course every year where he takes five s- people who um, sail with him creating content. Mm-hmm. And a lot of his stuff now is like just daily vlogs, like him just building shit, like him learning how to weld, him building a sea container to be a workshop, <laughs> like okay. just random shit. Yeah. He built out his van. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, it's not necessarily everything he's making is like, holy shit, that's the most beautiful thing. But he's doing, I think he lives a really good um, balance between like personal projects mm-hmm. out of his YouTube or Patreon or whatever it may be. And then his like really good passion projects. Yeah. And that's the stuff that I've like, I feel like I've learned this year too, is like separating myself. This is the issue before, I think, was working under when you were still working your job working under my brand and trying to do personal projects Mm -hmm. as well as client projects was strange because i'm like who do i ask like there's times where i'm like you know we like don't pay me for this like this is just something this is a passion project for Mm -hmm. sure and then there's times where like you're asking somebody for a paycheck and they're like oh what the fuck but it's just like i think it's has been such a more beautiful balance between the stuff that we're doing now because I have full freedom to take on projects through my brand, Mm -hmm. like my personal brand, uh, and still align with projects with the company. Yeah. Um, And the confusion is just not there anymore. That's good. It's just, it's something that I've kind of come to an aha moment about and I'm really, really stoked to be there. Curious, another question for, for Troy, for inspiration or like um, incentive to, to do more things or creativity, uh, is it ever outside of film or like what's that look like for you do you like again for for myself sometimes for writing at least you could see a painting or an interesting photograph or whatnot be like oh what's the other rest of that story look like and then i dive into it um for you for shooting or editing is there like somewhere you go outside of film for inspiration or is it just whatever comes to you social media yeah i know what you mean yeah yeah. Uh, a lot of it comes from music actually oh yeah so when i hear a song i usually try to picture a film or something that goes along with it so something i could create from that music Mm -hmm. because a lot of my edits start with me having the song already and then i piece it together and that's where the story comes from so when i hear a song in like a compilation or something i'm like that'd be great for an edit i just add it to my library and just like I just keep listening to as many different songs as I can. Like if I'm in a, I don't know, a soundtrack mood or something like, yeah. or like a epic cinematic or chill mm-hmm. song. I don't know. I just like, I get a lot of inspiration from music for sure. And I have a ton of hobbies and also 
driving around like randomly at night will yeah. you'll you'll see a location and be like that would be that's, sick that's but like one. yeah a lot yeah. of that comes from that just like random stuff you'll see and then yeah. you're just like shit like yeah stuff like that do you remember a time whether it be a song or a location, location where you saw it you're like okay take a picture of this or remember where we are or like that that beats really good putting in the library and then actually getting a full circle coming back to it and then I like that. The <laughs> yeah. Whole thing. yeah i've done that for sure like when i used it's to the most rewarding part of sometimes 100 mm-hmm. percent. yeah because you're like oh damn i actually like followed through but yeah. a lot of the times i'll just mark spots on my map like mm-hmm. in my on my phone i'll just put a pin yeah. and i'll be like location for later or something yeah, yeah, yeah. or like i have a song and i listen to it for like a week and then figure out how to execute and edit with it or yeah. something something mm-hmm. and then yeah same like i'm constantly there. saving like i i kind of think the same way is like i'll hear a song and i'll picture frames mm-hmm. yeah. um and i'm constantly saving stuff it's just like that's those are all the personal stuff that i want to do um and i'm hoping to use like do a ton of that stuff when i'm away on my trip because like there's so many cool little things I'll just hear, and I remember we talked about this on the first when you were leaving on the first podcast. Like I'll hear a song, mm-hmm. and you're like, "What do you see, Matt? What do you see?" And I'm like, "Ah, yeah. well, <laughs> yeah." No, I find that fascinating because like, for me, it's it's never been music. Like I never mm-hmm. like locationally for sure. Um, I remember I was walking in the city at night, and there was this flickering light outside a store. And I'm like, this, yeah. this right here, I'm like, short film in this setting. Yeah. Um, and and I'm those like, are the moments you have to trust. Right? Yeah, and I'm like, like why, why is this so interesting that this one's flickering a little bit versus that one? Yeah. Um, or then sometimes it's just like, I'll overhear a snippet of a conversation and I'm like, or I hear half of it. I'm like, what would the other half of that sound like? And then from that like dialogue, then I'll be like, okay, they're sitting and then I'll start to see a frame and then from that it builds outwards forwards and backwards around the story yeah. about like what that's going to look like yeah absolutely makes sense. Mm-hmm. yeah that yeah. totally makes sense I think it's-, it's the same general idea yeah, you just get your inspiration from different things yeah, which yeah. is that's where everybody creatively differs a little yeah. bit and we can't all be the same no. that's why we're all different <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I like it yeah, yeah. Well, let's lead into this episode's Marvel Minute. Oh, shit. Hi, yeah, I'm Ben T. Murdoch, and this is my Marvel Minute, where I get to chat about uh, what's going on in Marvel and the MCU. Um, So, Oscar considerations have been put out, not the nominations, but consideration for, um, for Oscars have been applied, and... Black Panther Wakanda Forever has been put forward along with Angela Bassett for Best, uh, best Performance by a Supporting Actress. Um, people are actually thinking that there's a true possibility there. Uh, his performance was remarkable. That movie is quite good, um, even with the tragic passing of Chadwick Boseman. Um, other Marvel news, something is upgraded from a Disney, Marvel Disney Plus show into a feature, which will be uh, Armor Wars with Don Cheadle, um, who uh, plays War Machine, normally just known as Iron Man's best friend. And truly, it's a character we don't know too much about at this point, even though we've known him for so long, and now we're going to get to explore a bit more of who that character is and, and what makes them tick. So it's nice to see all this new content coming our way, and um, good to see some more black representation in the MCU. Cool. Um, welcome back. Ben just finished his Marvel Minute, and what I was thinking about while we were there is there's a lot of arguments to be had about gear. Gear, oh. So what do you say to people who are new and starting and say, oh, I don't have the new camera, I can't do it. True. Or I, I just have this or I just have that and I can't do it. Like, Basically, you don't need it. Um, you can make anything work. For today, we didn't have a second tripod and we literally brought one out of thin air basically for the first shoot at least. but. You can rig anything to make it look good. We've been dealing with that for years and years. I mean, we started on T3s, and yeah. now we're shooting on pretty decent cameras. Of course you want it, but no, do you need it There's yet? a will, there's a way. Yeah. So. yeah, and like, it's, again, story, man. Story drives so mm-hmm. much further than yeah. a beautiful anamorphic lens with yeah. a red. And like, of course you want it. 
you know? <laughs> but like to any anybody who's young and starting and wanting to be a content creator or wanting to be a YouTuber, and I know that's like 90% of what kids want to be these days, yeah, which pretty is much, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, just fucking start, man. And like, if you have your phone, just film stuff with your friends and just yeah. like get into the groove of making things. Because that's Literally. been at least consistent between us and a lot of people I know is like, before you step into whatever um, field of film it's going to be, whether or not it's writing or directing, cinematography, editing. A lot of us all started the same way of shooting something in the backyard with friends. Yeah, yep. yeah just and start, start making yeah, something like, and see oh, how it just feels. Just for fun. Yeah. Um, and getting because, attached to that feeling. Again, like people can romanticize the fame and success they see on YouTube from big YouTubers. And um, it's more important to know how it feels to make things and, and feel if that aligns with you. Like if... If you enjoy doing it, then that should be the reason you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I want a red or an RE. It'll it'll be sitting on that tripod one day, I promise. Yes. And we'll still have it rigged up to to a yes. C stand. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sketch, but it works. I'm telling you. All right, Troy. Any last words? Thank you for so much for coming on yeah, as being no a guest. Problem. Anything you want to say or mention to the to the people? Just if you're thinking about it, just do it. That's yeah. all I'm gonna say because lately I've been just putting out you know a lot of videos on my on our youtube channel and stuff and i we've been sitting on it for six years and i would have loved to start six years ago so yeah. just start now and yeah. no matter how much it sucks now it'll always improve later so that's all we do with that but no i'll uh i'll end this with thank you for coming and being a guest on our show yeah and the thank first you guest. for yeah first guest thank you. and then thank you for um having us as a guest because we are in your house yeah. yes this is the, <laughs> the robinson production studio always. so thank you it's the studio now so. yes yeah. um yeah thanks so much guys for listening we will see you on the next one please check out the socials and follow along our journey um again if there's anything you guys would like to see or hear please reach out to myself or ben um, yeah, thanks again for listening. Yeah, cool. Cheers. Bye. Bye.